Yes, you're about to be on camera. <laughs> Hey y'all, so it'd been a long time since we did an herb walk and as I was walking into the office today, I was like, man, there's so much medicine just laying around, just walking from the back of the clinic to the front through the little field next to the clinic. So I was like, you know what, I've got an hour before we... Uh, my first patient today so I thought I'd do a quick herb walk just around the clinic and see what we've got going on so look I am literally in the front of the clinic and right out in front next to the oak tree is the one you guys are all probably sick of hearing about this is Biden's Alba and this one vegetable this is my favorite for lung issues yes covidy stuff uh then we have bruner talking about it for uh chronic lyme disease i would say it's appropriate for any kind of disorder dealing with cough it's researched for let's see what other fun stuff here it's researched for malaria Let's get a close-up of that flower. Probably my single most prescribed. There's the seeds, the two-prong sticky thing that it's named after. The bi-dense, that is by two. Dense, as in dental, is toothed. Uh, so bi-dense white flower. This one is hilarious. I just happened to notice this today. This is a papaya seed somehow landed out here. So we have papaya growing next to the oak, literally right in front of the clinic. Um, if we're really lucky, this is going to be a female tree. Hey, Matt, hope you're in town or soon to be in town. Um, so the papaya leaves, there's some nice research out there from everything from uh, dengue fever for the low platelets and we're also finding the leaves being added in uh, as just a regular tea for uh, for increasing platelets and uh, helping with digestion and phlegm of course the fruit and the seeds are super yummy and I was hoping to find this so this is the actual correct chunk of piedra. This is uh, it's a Central American herb called stonebreaker, stone crusher. And there's two species here. And this is the correct one. This is the one you would buy in the store. And you can see how these little knobbies are large and adhere to the stem as opposed to the wrong species which is this one that looks like it. There's some mild toxicity to this and you can't even see the seeds on here, but they're a lot smaller and they are hanging down from the stem here. This one looks like you might have a, see how small those seeds are and very soon they'll actually be hanging down from the stem. So making sure large and attached to the stem. They're only here about half the year. Hey, Paul. Um, and uh, it's specific for kidney stones. i got to watch my time here, so presumably my new patient is showing up here around. So this is the parking lot next to the clinic with our cool wall mural here. Um, so this field is loaded with cedar. And so you can see the seed of flowers are open. That classic pinwheel shape that we've got uh, that's anything in the mallow family. So this is a Malviaceae. Uh, it's also for lung conditions and I would say is appropriately, um, would be okay to put in both the post Lyme condition, uh, chronic Lyme condition as well as, um, let's see if we can find a bigger one. Uh, chronic Lyme disease and covid -y stuff uh, because the roots are high in ephedrine um, which is a bronchial dilator opens up the lungs oh there's some nice big ones um, 
it is also because it's in the mallow family we'll find that it's got mucilage in it that it's tridoshic which means it's good for every body type there's the leaf and we have a couple of different species here uh, this is probably Ceta acuta but don't quote me on that um, and so this is tridoshic it's funny there's not a lot of research oh there's a beautiful shot of the flower wide open Um, we know it is wireweed, but you can research it on the um, Ayurvedic name Bala, B-L-A, B-A-L-A. There we go. I can spell today. Coffee has not kicked in. Um, and this is an herb they toss into just about every formula, it would seem like. There was something else interesting that was my trigger for saying, I'm going to go do an herb walk. Where did it go? Ah, there it is. So, this little beauty, let's not kneel in any cat poop. This wonderful herb is purslane. Let me get out of the shadow. This is purslane. And so, look, we got cedar wrapped up with the purslane. So, purslane is a weed. It loves full sun, crappy, sandy soil. Um, ugh. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. So you can see it's these leathery, smooth leaves. Oops, there we go. That if I squish this, even in this hot sun, you can really see the mucilage in there. Nice and slimy. Um, this is a cooling and moistening herb, hot infective disorders, dry things. And so although it's not specific to cough, we tend to uh, use this for any kind of hot and dry condition. So, boy, not to sit here and beat up on the COVID stuff, this would be appropriate for COVID um, as well. And not to be confused, this is a related um, species. This one is very bitter. Um, is thought to have some toxicity. I don't recommend eating that one. You want this one. And so this is Portulaca oleifera, uh, and it is um, high in essential fatty acids, a number of minerals, uh, has some amounts of iodine in there, generally good for you. So something that can easily be added into salads. Let's see what's actually in the back of the clinic. I'm literally back here where we park. And, oh, there's some of our false kava. So amazingly doing well out here, not getting watered in full sun, along with some aloe, so it doesn't belong out here, but seems to have spread here on its own. So this is um, called false kava. It uh, has all the same functions. It's also called a uh, root beer plant, but we use it exactly the same as kava. Uh, we use the roots, uh, the aerial parts, the young leaves are eaten in Central and South America. The older leaves can even uh, use kind of like as a, a, a wrapping for grilled meats. I knew there's some other things growing back here. Let's see what we got. Oh, there's a beautiful cedar. Don't harvest your medicine here. This is a terrible, terrible place. Look at that big old cedar plant. I bet you there's a huge tap root there. Oh, here's the beautiful cedar. Look at this cedar. It's as high as my knee, full of blooms. I'm going to come back here and harvest some seeds later and bring these over to the house and the yard and uh, plant those so that we get more cedar going in the yard. We've harvested a lot in the yard. I think take some over to the new space as well. I don't know. Let's see what other interesting things we've got. I'm going to wander the alleyway here. Darn it, people are cleaning stuff. How dare they? get rid of all my good herbs by maintaining their lawns it's uh, it's interesting I've had some people talk about and uh, I don't know why the name is escaping me but this beautiful pink bush I've heard some reports of that being used as a tea for medicine and uh, 
I am unfamiliar with its use for medicine. Um, I I'm, I'm, can't believe the name of it's on the tip of my tongue. And um, the only thing I've seen is a really weird blood infection from that being used uh, when getting punctured from the thorns. So, although I've read reports, I don't recommend tea out of that until I know an awful lot more about it. Look at this, just endless, endless rows of cedar. I don't think I've ever seen so much cedar growing. So, it's um, interesting that in the middle of a pandemic that primarily affects the lungs, that we would see this wonderful plant uh, prolifically growing that is so beneficial and moistening to the lung for this uh, dry lung condition. It's funny, we always forget about oaks. Oaks are uh, great uh, medicine. It's a stringing, um, classically used for um, hot, wet disorders, um, used as a mouthwash or gargle, or for chronic diarrhea. Here is some lovely spiderwort just kind of hanging out here on its own. I don't want to destroy the bloom on this, but this is a nice <laughs> uh, cooling, moistening herb. Um, think of it as a snack as well. These are super yummy here. We can get this little guy off of here. So middle of the day, we didn't even get any rain yesterday. And you can see how just sticky, slimy, wet. And this is a sweet, yummy plant to eat. I, I'll snack on these all day long. Uh, here's a good example. This is the wrong species of uh, chunka. And so you see how the little uh, seeds on there are not adhered to the stem. They're actually hanging down. You know, oddly enough, they're on top. So this is the wrong species. We don't want to eat this one. We want the one where the large seeds are adhered on the bottom. And I'm looking around for some more. There's our Bidens again. Cedar, cedar, cedar everywhere. Let's see if there's any exciting stuff out here. I know they had some interesting plants, so I'm not sure, really sure unless we dig it up, but there is a, <laughs> I sure will. Um, this is actually related to the Chinese herb Mai Mendong. Um, it's sold in Home Depot, and so there's one look-alike species, and without digging it up, I'm never sure. Some nice aloe in case anybody gets sunburned out there. Uh, I was hoping that was lemongrass. And this is, of course, related to a Chinese herb I can't think of the name of that's for arthritis. Ah, oh, somebody's put some herbs and spices in here. This is thyme, which is another anti infective oregano. Let's see if I'm right. Yep, yeah, nice oregano. I'll remember that for lunch later. I always think that when we do this, we should always be planting things that are useful if we're going to take the time to grow and water them. A beautiful rosemary. Rosemary does great. Um, so many of our Italian herbs and spices are full sun. Rosemary is one um, that we never give enough uh, credibility to. Rosemary, if you read Shakespeare, is for remembering your past, present, and future. Um, I use it just for waking up. Uh, I used to have a rosemary plant right by the front door, so when I went out for the day, I could actually just rub it and give a good sniff to the hands. Um, but rosemary also is known as aruba fashioned. Aruba fashioned is something that brings blood to the surface. Um, oh, there's a beautiful spider wart. Uh, all right, it's so bright, I can't even see my own screen. Um, and it also, and this is, Oh, buckwheat, I believe. No. Oh, come on, Bob. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on this. Um, sorghum. There we go. It's sorghum. Well, somebody planted sorghum around here. It's beautiful. Go ahead and spread some more of these seeds. Um, and so used uh, in fermentation, but um, also can be used as a grain. 
and aids in digestion, helps with phlegmy conditions. But the rosemary used as a wash is one of my go-tos for uh, keeping the hair, um, especially during chemotherapy, that's my go-to. It helps with memory issues, among other things, uh, but also helps you from, uh, keep you from losing your hair, but it has to be done every day. Just a ton of Bidens here. We could eat for days off of this. It's too bad it's on a roadway. But you know, zombie apocalypse, there won't be any cars left, so, you know, this will all clean up in a couple of years. Let's see what other interesting guys we got. Oh. So we've got a little bit of uh, Smilax. Let's see if we can get that on camera. So there's a Smilax vein. It's got some thorns on it. There's the more classical presentation. This is a relative, it's a nicer, healthier one. We're back in front of the clinic. This is related to Tu Fu Ling's uh, Greenbrier Smilax. And uh, can be used both as a snack as well as um, is used for damp conditions in the below the belly button for lack of define it and uh, any kind of wet or phlegmy conditions. Look, I'm back at the front. I want to show that chunk of piedra since I showed you the really good non-example. In case you missed it before, this is for kidney stones. Chunk of piedra. It is all over the state of Florida right now, so really easy to find. On the stem, make sure that it's adhered and not hanging off. This one's not exactly growing wild, but this is all beautiful mugwort. Mugwort is a dream herb. It invigorates the blood, helps with cold menstrual disorders. And we have a little rue plant here that's helping to protect this uh, premises here, as well as uh, rue is a strong digestive bitter and antimicrobial. Uh, hi clinic oh you can't see through the window oh well I'm gonna go get ready for my first patient for the day and uh, you all have a wonderful day be safe and go for an herb walk the plants don't sp spread COVID so we can go and hang out and get as close as you want to those little boogers have fun